For back to set exercise 4.16, we have print palindrome. We need to write a method called print palindrome. So we're going to have it as a public static void, and then our name with the parameters, and then a bracket. That'll be our header. It's going to accept a scanner as a parameter. So inside of here, we're going to have a scanner, and we can just call this console. And it prompts the user to enter one or more words and prints whether the entered string is a palindrome. So if we go into here, oh, we also have a description of what a palindrome is um, inside of here and a little example. And we have some examples right here as well. So inside of here, we need to have our prompt that says type one or more words. So for a prompt, we're gonna have a system.out.println, or it should just be print because we want the user's input to be on the same line, have a space here, and then we'll end this line. Well, to get the user input, we're going to do the console dot next line to get the entire line, but we want to store this. So we're going to store it inside of word, a new string that we're creating. We're setting it equal to console dot next line. So that'll get the entire line. And now when we do this, we want to, for palindromes, we want to compare the first letter to the last letter and then the next letter to the next last letter and so on and so forth. And so to do this, what we can do, is we're going to get the front and we're going to get the back. So to get the back, I'm going to do int and I'm going to call it back. And we're going to set it equal to the word dot length. So the length of the word minus one though, because indexes is one less than the word length. For the front, I'm actually going to put it with a loop, with our loop. It's going to be in a for loop. We're going to do int and we're going to do front is equal to zero initially. And we're going to run this as long as front is less than the entire word length. So we can just do back plus one, or we can just type in word dot length. And either way, it'll work. We're going to need to increment A every single time we go through this. And that is our for loop header that we're going to use. So we want to get the specific character inside of our string. To do this, we're going to use the character class. We're going to do character. We're going to call it C1 and we're going to set it equal to the word dot char at, and this gets the character at a specific index. Since we're incrementing our front every single time, we're going to pass in our front and that will be going from left to right, but we want to go from right to left as well. So we're going to make a new character. We're going to call it C2 and we're going to set it equal to word dot char at, and then inside of here, we are going to have our length which we made right here. And then inside of here, we're gonna have back, which we made inside of here, which is the entire word length minus one. Now, every time we go through this, at the end of this for loop, we, we know we increment our front, which for some reason I put A, usually in loops I use A or B, some letter in the alphabet, but I'm being specific here with front. So uh, we're incrementing front here, so it goes up every single time. We need to uh, increment or kind of decrement our back that way it goes from right to left. So when we are done with this for loop, we're gonna to have to do back minus minus, and that will uh, push it back one index. Now we need to see if these two characters are equal to each other. So to do that, we're gonna go into an if statement, right? And we're gonna say that we need to check if our C1 dot two string, and then we are going to use the uh, method where we do dot compare to ignore case. And so we're going to have parameters like this. And what we pass in is going to be whatever we're comparing, ignoring the case. So we want to pass in this C2, right? Because that's the other character. So we're going to have C2 dots to string. And this turns it into a string because you can only compare strings. So we're turning the character into a string. And we have a whole dot compare to ignore case in the how to playlist about Java. And that can be found in the channel. But basically, we want to use this dot compare to ignore case to return an integer. When we have this whole operation right here, it's going to return an integer. I think it's like negative one if it's greater, um, if it's if the string right here, or no, if the string up here is less than the string in here, and then one if the string in here is greater than the string in here, something like that. But what's important for this problem is that if it does not equal zero, it's not the exact same. So we can say if this C1 does not equal 
0, which means it does not equal to our C2, we're going to be inside of this if statement. We're going to do a system.out.print line. And then we are just going to print out our word, which we have right here. We can see in the example, it wants us to print out a word. And then it says, is not a palindrome. So that's going to be our string here. We can then end this statement. We can have our return. And the statement is complete. So after we do that, we are going back into our for loop. We are going to take out from our back. And then we can eventually end this for loop because we are done here. We've gone through it entirely. We've checked everything. I'm not sure why it's putting my bracket all the way over here, but we've, we've gone through everything. We've checked everything. We have our if statement that takes care of if it's not a palindrome. And if we go through this and it is a palindrome, that means we'll never execute this if statement. So that means we'll never return. So that means we'll fall out of this for loop. And if we fall out of this for loop, that can only mean one thing, that we do have a palindrome. So we're going to do a system dot out dot print line. And then inside of here, we are going to print that our word is a palindrome. So we should also have a space in front of here and a space in front of here. And then we can end this line and then we can end our function. So hopefully that works out perfectly. Um, it seems like the brackets are a little bit off, but we can test it by submitting it. And oh, we do uh, have a parenthesis missing. And that's because we need one right here because this parenthesis takes care of this and then this parenthesis will take care of all of this. So we can try submitting that. And it says that the package system does not exist. And that's because I spelled system wrong. And we are trying to compare a string to an int here but this one should be okay because we are using dot to string. Oh, no, it's not okay because all of this is one operation and then this is being compared to it. So the parentheses should be here and not here. So all of this is one thing surrounded in parentheses and we're saying that it does not equal to zero. If we try submitting that with our changes, the fixes, fixes being here and the correction here, we passed eight out of eight tests. So that is the code to do this 4.16 print palindrome example.